Everybody, Aaron Count Sage Dynamics, and this is the Leupold LCO. The LCO is the Leupold Carbine Optic, which means it kind of set you up for redundancy and for failure because people are going to say the Leupold LCO like I introduced it. Uh, but that's you know, an issue with acronyms. Um, I've had the LCO for a while, but it's been sitting in the safe. Had a lot of people wanting me to do a review on it, wanted my opinion on it, but I just didn't have the time to fit in the queue. When I started the review on the Q Trash Panda, uh, I decided to throw the LCO on that rifle, kill two birds with one stone, and knock out a really good high quality review. The LCO has a lot of commonalities with other red dot optics that are out there. It's a 1x magnification red dot optic, uh, has multiple brightness settings, uh, it's night vision friendly, uh, it's got a good battery life. So you're going to get that from a lot of other optics out there. So the question becomes why go with the LCO versus other optics? Of course that's up to personal preference and what your needs are. One thing that the LCO does do differently than a lot of the optics out there is it has a one MOA red dot versus the standard two or you still see some four MOA red dots. So you get a smaller point of aim, one inch at 100 yards, 100 meters, so to speak, uh, give and take some very fine math there. Uh, so that is a bit of a departure from what's become the standard, the two MOA, and you still see some four MOA optics. Getting into specs and features, the LCO 6061 aluminum body has a very generous viewing window. Uh, battery life can be five years depending on the setting. Uh, it has 16 brightness settings, so it's night vision friendly all the way up to super, super bright for, for extreme day use if it's really bright in the environment you're in. Uh, and it's push button on off, so you can set the brightness setting you want, press in to turn the optic off, press in to turn the optic back on, it's ready to go, it's on the setting that you wanted it on, which I found to be uh, pretty pretty cool. Uh, it, it, it's not the only optic that does something like that, but it is nice to see they included that feature. Has half MOA adjustments, which is you know, pretty much standard for your non-magnified optics, so it's doing a lot of things that a lot of the other optics already do. And again, I don't like to do comparison videos, but I feel like it's necessary to mention these things because people are going to ask the questions anyway. Where is the big departure from the LCO versus everything else that's on the market? Uh, one thing I didn't necessarily care for with the LCO is the fact that it has a proprietary riser. I have to use a third party uh, full pick riser in order to get any additional height out of this optic currently from Leupold. I don't really care for that. I don't like optics that have proprietary risers if I can avoid it. Uh, it's not necessarily a huge issue, but it is something I'd like to see addressed or I'd like to see an option to get a little bit of extra height out of the optic if I wanted it. I personally don't need it. I'm not a 193 kind of guy. Uh, generally the uses for those, uh, for me personally, um, are with night vision, co-witnessing with worn night vision over, over my peepers. Um, with the LCO I found shooting under night vision that I didn't have a problem acquiring the dot when trying to co-witness with my, uh, my previous uh, 15s. So it wasn't a huge issue. Of course that being said, there's a lot of people out there that want the 193 or 2.2 or 2.3 height mount and that's just not an option from Leupold currently. If you're not familiar with the burn down, it's 500 rounds as fast as possible. The reason I do this is to test the uh, test the volume. Um, 500 rounds fired as quickly as possible is somewhat different from 500 rounds fired slowly. This being an all aluminum optic, I was and because it does sit lower and it's a one piece mount, I was curious to see how much heat was going to translate from the receiver to the optic body and if that was going to create any issues. Generally, a burn down with an optic doesn't cause any problems because of a number of factors, one being the fact that it sits so far away from the actual mechanism that's firing the bullets, being the bolt carrier group. Uh, but with something that's one piece like this, like I said, I was curious to see if the heat transfer, if there was any heat transfer, which I imagine there will be, was going to cause any issues. So 500 rounds as fast as possible, here's the burn down.
The optic did pick up more heat than I've noticed with other optics on burn downs. It was noticeably warmer than maybe it should have been uh, if it sat higher over the gun or if it was a two-piece mount, if there was another bunch of other factors that could have uh, mitigated that. But it was still able to be touched. You can see it was still cool to the touch, but I definitely noticed the fact that the optic body did get hot. Now, there wasn't any flickering, I didn't lose the dot, and I didn't lose the zero. So as far as the burn down goes, uh, the LCO passed. As far as general performance goes, it rode the gun for over 2,000 rounds. The fact that uh, filming this video, I'm, I'm almost at 2,500 rounds uh, on the LCO. Uh, it's a very generous viewing window, despite that I don't really have any issues picking up the one away dot. Of course, part of that is the fact just the way that the rifle works. I've got that cheek weld puts my eye right behind the optics, so picking up the dot shouldn't be an issue anyway. But there have been... Uh, opinions in the past, and sometimes they're very valid in the fact that the one way dot can be a little bit too small for non-magnified rifle use. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that across the board, but I can see how can be a potential issue, especially if your brightness is too low. Uh, the larger the dot, even with lower brightness, the more likely you are to pick it up. I found the one way dot to be uh, very, very, um, well, to, to use a non-metric, awesome. I like it a lot. I like the fact that I can reach out and touch things very, very far away, and I've got a little bit more fine-tuning that I can do on a 1MOA dot on a 1MOA gun than I'd get from your standard 2MOA dot. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to, you know, get rid of all my optics and go to MOAs, but I do like the fact that they are offering the optic in a 1MOA. Controls and adjustments are simple and intuitive. I can control my brightness with my support hand when I'm on the rifle, which is something I always like out of an optic. I don't like to have to come completely off the gun to mess with things. Uh, not a huge issue, but it's something that definitely needs to be addressed. And sometimes your brightness settings uh, can change dramatically from situation to situation. If I'm outdoors and it's a sunny day, not a big deal. If I'm in a shoot house and I'm working a situation where I'm going from dark to light or light to dark, I like to be able to make a quick adjustment before I go through that door. So that's something I definitely like to see, and I'm glad that they put it on, that, uh, on the side where I can control it with my support hand. Um, zeroing adjustments are, are, are tight. Now, when it comes to zero, uh, is the LCO going to maintain zero after the drop test? There have been some complaints and some comments. Uh, my last optic video, people brought up the fact that I did the rifle optics different than I did pistol optics, and that's a very valid point. I was using the balcony test for optics, and I was using the concrete shoulder height drop test for pistol optics. Now, the reason for that is they developed separately of each other. The, the two review process developed separately, and it never really, for some reason, occurred to me that maybe I should standardize my pistol and my rifle optic review when it came to the drop test. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So from now on, all rifle optics get the concrete. Prior to the drop test, five round group at 100 yards. And here is your five round group after the drop test. So as you can see, as far as I can tell, uh, maintain zero, which is exactly what you want. Uh, an optic is going to get, well, you're going to get what you pay for. Uh, but it bears mentioning that the MSRP on the LCO is considerably higher than some of its competition on the market, uh, right around the $900 range. Of course, you can find them cheaper than that because that's good uh, manufacturer suggested retail price. It's not necessarily what it's going to sell for unless they have map and then you get into the actual uh, manufacturer said, said you can't sell at this price. Loophold's not really doing that as far as I can tell uh, because the price range I found online is anywhere from the MSRP to a little bit more expensive from some websites all the way down to comparable to what you'd pay for like a micro uh, or, or something similar to that. So between nine, six hundred dollars. I don't understand why the MSRP is, is $900. Uh, I'm sure there's some reasoning for it. Uh, I'm a big fan of Leupold products. I always have been. I've been using Leupold my entire professional career, and I've never been disappointed with something they offered. Uh, sometimes I'm, I kind of scratch my head a little bit, and it's not something I'm really into, but for the most part, their magnified optics have always been a favorite of mine. Not necessarily the favorite, but uh, I'm never afraid to use them. Their red dot, and of course this isn't their first red dot, but it seems to be their standard offering uh, for the general purpose non-magnified patrol rifle, duty rifle, uh, self-defense rifle uh, category. Um, it's a good optic. Uh, if you can find it at a reasonable price, there's no reason to not get it over something else. Um, that being said, it doesn't necessarily do anything substantially better than some of the other offerings that are already out there, which isn't a bad thing. It just means that it's meeting the standard of, of, of expected performance, according to me, of course. This is just my, my opinion. 
uh, based on my review and my time with it. Uh, co-witnesses with night vision well. Uh, doesn't experience any significant fogging issues. Uh, it survives a uh, shoulder height drop test on concrete. Um, no flickering issues under high rates of fire or extreme heat. Uh, and it's got a 1 MOA dot. But what would keep me from going to this and only this is definitely going to be that riser height. Um, not really a huge fan of that. Uh, I would like to, and again, I don't need the 193 or 2 inch or higher than that, but I would like to be able to get like a, uh, I don't know, a higher optic. Uh, low, put it on a lower one third with the generous window. And I think I understand why they don't offer it with a, with a higher riser, and that's because the window is significantly larger than a lot of the other optics out there. Uh, except for maybe like an EOTech or something similar with the square design like, like, the, the, like the Vortex Huey or something like that. So that's probably why the riser height uh, wasn't considered. But I'd like to be able to have the same size window with the optics sitting a little bit higher, say a lower one-third type height. And that's not something I can currently get without using a third-party riser, which I don't care for. So maybe in a future generation they'll have uh, some type of proprietary riser system where I can switch out heights, and that would be nice. But other than that, I was very impressed with the LCO. It's a very durable, very usable optic, and controls are very intuitive. And I'm definitely going to continue using it. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly. Yeah, you were totally supposed to catch that. <laughs> no, no, I'm completely kidding. I, I know you. If I'd thrown you a beach ball, you wouldn't have caught it. <laughs>